Philippians 4, 4, rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are pure, and whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Those things which you have learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Pray with me one more time. God, we thank you right now for what is written. God, we thank you and know that there's evidence that you have breathed these very words through holy men of old. And we know, God, that they are of divine origin and still function even now by a divine order. And we're believing, God, that you will now take this word as a seed and you will plant it within the hearts and the minds of men and women in this house so that they would rise to a full stature of Christ and walk far above religion and the foolishness of the traditions of men and walk in the power and the might of the Lord Jesus Christ in a depth and an intimacy with the one that loves them the most. Amen. God, we commit this house to you. We love you. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I may get crazier on this one, and let me tell you why. Because it's the victory. And it's the victory. There's a lot of things that's troubled the world. I'm going to beat around the bush just to preface what I want to say. Because I'm going to spend five minutes pumping you up and then walking out of here. I want to give you something to think about. But uh, there's a lot of things that's troubled the world, especially in this hour, which ought not trouble the church. Let me tell you that clearly. Uh, and the people, if you will, think a lot about peace and the things of peace. And I'm going to speak upon that here in just a minute. So this letter that was given by the Apostle Paul and the Holy Ghost is one of the most comforting texts that should be known to the born-again believer. The book of Philippians as a whole, for that matter, uh, particularly the fourth chapter, Amen. deals with the victory of the people of God. And the thought I want to press into your heart, and even into my heart this morning, is the idea of right thinking. Because much of what you hear and read today is untrue and it's confused. Or it's disorderly because of wrong thinking. And I've tried time and time and time again to bring us into a position that would cause us to think right, knowing that apart from God and the ways of God and the mindsets of God, that we will never see that as a fulfilled thing in our lives. Almost a generation ago when the computer revolution took place, and I'm just going to take you through this real quick. There was a term coined that described both the cause and consequence of putting the wrong data into a computer. It's the idea of garbage in and garbage out. Take it from somebody that knows computers. And in short, what you put in is what you're going to get out. And that too is true about the human mind. Because the human mind, if you will, is maybe the best computer that was ever in the earth. Amen. And because of that, there was consequences. And there's reward to what it is that we sow into this mind of, of ours. It's far advanced to any computer that's ever been designed. And I'm telling you, the garbage in, garbage out principle is absolutely important in our lives just the same. Amen. The average person, listen to me, will, will have 10,000 separate thoughts every day. That's a total of three and a half million thoughts in a year. I want you to think about that. And most of you already this morning have had at least 2,000 thoughts. And you're going to have at least another 8,000 thoughts before it is that you go to bed tonight. And because of that, you need to consider what it is you're putting in between your ears. Amen. Every one of those thoughts represents a choice that you make, a decision that you've got to think about. I want you to imagine... If I were to give you $10,000 this morning and I told you to spend it on whatever you wanted to spend it on, but you had to spend it all today. How many of y'all know that you would stop for a moment and begin?
get to consider how it is that you're going to spend that money. Because it's not such a small thing at that point when you've got 24 hours to do it. It's no longer trivial what you do with that $10,000. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. How sad would it be if we were to, to devote that much energy into something like money and what we were going to do with it? But not spend or invest that kind of energy on what goes into our head. How sad would it be if it became that trivial? On what it is that we allow our thought processes to be. Is anybody hearing me right now? I heard a man once say, beware of what you set your mind on because you will surely become it. Another said, change your thoughts and you will change the world. Proverbs chapter 23 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. The word heart there specifically speaks of the mind. As you believe in your mind, what you accept in your mind as truth, what you are rooted and grounded in in your head is ultimately going to dictate the outcome of your life. Why do you think I've got so many hang-ups on what we see or what we teach or what we say? You will never hear this guy say that we are a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who saved my soul. Why? Because we are not nobodies. We are the sons of God. You will never hear this guy saying, I'm just a rotten, nasty sinner. If not for grace, I wouldn't make it. Sure, I was a rotten, nasty sinner, but today I'm bought with a price. I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm the king and a priest thanks to God. I am not a rotten, nasty sinner. I am a son. Yeah. Conflicting thoughts cannot be agreed upon within your mind at the same time. They can exist in your mind at the same time, but they cannot be agreed upon at the same time. Amen. So the choice is ours this morning, whether or not we're going to give place to thoughts that are constructive or destructive. It really is that simple. Is. Jeremiah chapter 6 says, Hear, O earth, behold, I will bring every evil upon this people, even the fruit of their thoughts, because they have not hearkened unto my words. They have not hearkened unto my words. You hear what God is saying? Amen. Romans chapter 8 says, For they that are of the flesh do mind, do mind, do mind the things of the flesh. But they that are after the Spirit do mind the things of the Spirit. Do you hear what I'm saying? To be carnally minded, that's naturally minded, that's not the thoughts of God, it is death. But to be spiritually minded, that's the mind of Christ, to hear what God says and to apply it, that is life and peace. Amen. The Bible says that the carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can it be. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. If I know anything, I know this. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world. But be transformed, metamorphosis, butterfly, by the renewing of your mind. That you may prove what is that perfect and acceptable will of God. You can't prove it if you're thinking wrong. They say, you lay hands on the sick and they recover. I lay hands and nothing happens. Because you can't prove the will of God until you agree with God and walk with him and think like he thinks. As long as you're given place to everything other than the mind of Christ, you will not prove anything that looks like Christ. Amen. I don't want to speak to you right now this morning to caution you and to urge you. What did the text say? What did our text say? It says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever so things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. I hear the Spirit of the Lord speaking unto His church to snap out of it in 2022 and stop entertaining devils and every fiery dart that would come against your mind and to make a choice to understand that God has raised you up to a high place and has bought you with a price and now you are a son of God. You are not below reproach. You are in Christ Jesus above reproach. I said you are in Him and washed in the blood and accepted in the beloved, transformed from darkness to light, grafted in amongst the natural branches. It is high time that the church would start thinking like Jesus. 
I'm not even punk yet. That's not funny. Speak your mind and make sure it's pure and lovely and of good report. Ephesians 4, I'm just going to move on. That you put off concerning the former conversation of the old man. Amen. It's speaking of the carnal mind. It's speaking of the former things, the former ways of thinking. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. Then be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. And that you put on. That's a choice. You've got to do it. You've got to make a choice. God is not going to drag you through the mud and make your feet take every step you've got to take. He is going to give you a choice to make. He said, I set before you life and death. I'll tell you my words. I'll give heed to them and follow. That's our call. And right now you've got to make a choice to put on the new man, which is after God, created in righteousness and true holiness. Proverbs 21 says, the thoughts of the diligent tend only to plenteousness, but everyone that is hasty only to want. I'm telling y'all, man, right now, this is what I've learned. They will tell you in secular science you spend three weeks dedicated to thinking a different way, and it will absolutely change your thought processes. Some of you have lived your life even recently, weighed down because things aren't going the way that you think they need to. Your employer is not treating you the way that maybe they should. Your finances are a train wreck, and you don't know what to do. Your body's been out of alignment, therefore you've been listening to the wrong voice. That voice comes into your head and begins to accuse you, begins to plant question marks that God never planted in your mind. It begins to cause you to say, is it me? Am I the problem? Am I the one that's inadequate? Am I the reason? And God is saying unto you, lift up your head, oh you sleeper. Lift up your eyes and look up to the gates and let the king of glory come in. Put on his mind. Think like one who is a king and is a priest and is bought with a price, who has the victory in the Lord Jesus Christ that knows that the blood was absolutely enough to carry them from death unto life and knows that Jesus Christ is going to keep them because he finishes what he started. Arise, O oh sleeper, and let the glory of God shine in you and start thinking like a king, why don't you? Amen. Well, praise God. Philippians 2. This is one of my favorites. Let this mind be in you. Amen. Which was also in Christ Jesus. Let me read that again because I want you to hear it. Let this mind be in you. First word is let. Make the choice. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, Amen. who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Amen. Am I God? No. Is Richard God? No. Let me tell you what I know. I know that the God man who came into the earth and put on skin and bones to live as sinners, to lay down his life as a sinner on Calvary, to be the substitutionary atonement for me. I know that the God man, when he came into the earth and did the work that he did and then gave himself as a ransom, he went to the tomb for three days. He descended into the lower parts of the earth. He preached unto those that were in the prisons and then he ascended. And then he ascended yet again to heavenly places. And he took a seat at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. And then when he took a seat because the work was finished no longer needing to stand daily offering oftentimes the same sacrifices that could never take away sin. He sat down at the right hand of and when he sat down, he began to pour his spirit out upon everybody that would believe. And I'm going to tell you this. When he poured his spirit out on me, it ushered me to the right hand of God. I took a seat with Christ Jesus. My life is hid in Christ and God. Colossians 3.3. 3. And because of that, I've got a mind in me that does not think it's robbery for me to be equal with God. Meaning that I'm sitting on his throne with him because he put me there. I did not ascend into the heavens. I did not earn it like Satan thought he would. God put me in him with him because I am his beloved bride. And because of that, he loves me. And now I choose to live my life with a mindset that knows I'm in him. Whatever you don't take 
control of that comes into your conscious mind will eventually become downloaded into your subconscious mind. Whatever has influence over your subconscious mind is ultimately going to control your life. Amen. Did anybody hear what I just said? Yes. yes. Should I say it twice? I'm doing it. <laughs> if you don't take control of what comes into your conscious mind, it's eventually going to be downloaded into your subconscious spiritual mind. And whatever has influence over your subconscious mind is ultimately going to control your life. That's right. Titus chapter 3. We're exhorted to affirm continually the promises of God. Why? What is affirm? It's to speak with authority. To speak it like you believe it. Affirm it continually. As often as you can, 24-7. Why? Because I'm forcing the things of God into a place that will ultimately produce my reality. I'm saying, I am a son of God. When I have a migraine and I fail God and I feel like I'm struggling, I make a choice to say, I am. A son of God. I am seated in heavenly places. I am bought with a price. I am king and a priest. I am a royal priesthood. I am the head and not the tail. I am the salt of the earth. I am the light of the world. I am a city which is set upon a hill which cannot be hidden. I am filled with the spirit of the most high God. I am a partaker of his divine nature. I am seated in heavenly places. And by the time I've done that, my chest begins to swell. I'm 30 feet tall, and I'm daring anything from hell to try to come and prevail against the gates of this heaven. I'm telling you, as I begin to speak on what's lovely, and begin to speak and think on what's true, and good, and of virtue, and of good report, as I begin to put that on my mouth, and begin to speak it, it begins to convert my mind. And as my mind is converted to agree with what God has spoken, it's in that place that it becomes my reality. Amen. Somebody needs to hear what I'm saying, because day in, day out, the enemy draws back the bow. He sets a fiery dart aimed at the back of your head. And because you've not been affirming and thinking on what God says, or even knowing what God says, when that fiery dart comes your way, you begin to entertain what it was that it had written on it. You say to yourself, maybe it's true. Maybe it's right. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe this. Maybe that. And God says, let God be true. And every man be a liar. God says unto you, you are my offspring. You are the sperm of seed of the Most High. When you believe and receive that, you are above reproach. You are nestled into the King of Glory. You can't be touched. Amen. Amen. Jason, you know what I'm saying right now? Yeah. <clears throat> oh. Glory to God. The enemy cometh not. But to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you might have life, and that more abundant, says the Lord. Where is life in an accusation? Where is life in the lies of the pit? God says, as He is. So are you in this world. Is God the problem? Is God confused? Is God the author of confusion? Listen to me and listen well. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were created by Him, and apart from Him, not anything that was made was made. In Him was life, and that life is the light of men. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The law came by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. I will expose your righteousness and your works, and they will not benefit you, says the law. It's the works of Jesus Christ and the words of the eternal God of heaven yes. that will produce peace like a river. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. So what do we do? The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the seed. When you sow a seed, God is looking for a harvest that looks like that seed. He's the only seed. There's not many seeds. There's one seed. He is the one. Yes. So when God sent heaven's best into the earth as a seed and sowed him into a dark place, he was expecting that in the womb of that dark place, light would shine forth in that darkness and bring forth life like never before. But through that, he was not looking for a church that would buy into every fiery dart of the work of Satan. He was looking for a church that understood that he became flesh to dwell among us. That he put on skin and bones to be in our stead and to accept our punishment and to take upon himself the wrath of God. So that you and I could become partakers with the seed by faith. He's looking for a church that will accept the work of Calvary. Because when we accept the work of Calvary, we agree with the work of Calvary. I know that I have the capacity to fall short. I know that I have the capacity to say something stupid or have a bad day. But I know that my life is hidden in Christ and God. And because my life is hidden in Christ and God, I stand before you right now as the perfect righteousness of the Lord Most High, blameless before God, totally justified. I know because I've accepted the work of Calvary that I'm as he is in this world. And there's absolutely nothing that can take me from his hand. He will never leave me. He will never forsake me. I'm his. And I want to tell you right now, man, what you choose to sow into this mind is what's going to be produced in your life. And the Apostle Paul, by the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, has exhorted the people for 2,000 years and said unto you, brother, take what it is that's lovely. Take what it is that's pure. Take what it is that's praiseworthy. Quench those fiery darts. Submit yourself unto God. Resist the devil and he will flee. How do I resist him? I put on the mind of Christ. I start believing what God has spoken. I start receiving his words and not the enemy's darts. And in that place I have life. You hit an offering for sure. All I need is an amen in the corner for an offering. You know what I mean? That's the Lord. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and any praise, thank God these things. Why? Why, Paul? Because the rest of them will ruin your life. The Bible says that God is the God of peace. That's right. If it ain't peace, it ain't God. The Bible says that God is the God of peace. If it's not peace, it's not God. What you're thinking on is going to either produce peace or condemnation. Do you hear what I'm saying? Amen. Colossians 3, listen. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits at the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth, for you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. Amen. That's right. Isaiah 55 says, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, 
neither my ways or your ways. How many of y'all love that verse? Good. Now let me tell you what it means. My thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways. Let me read the rest. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts neither are my ways. Your ways, saith the Lord. Amen. Speaking to the unrighteous man. Who are you? We are the righteous. The righteous man. And the righteous man of God. What are you exhorted to do as the righteous? Understand that your thoughts and your ways in the mind of Christ ought to be his thoughts and ought to be his ways. Understand that as the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, when you put on the mind of Christ, that you are no longer the unrighteous man whose thoughts and ways are below that of God. You've got to know that it's his mind that's in you. And because it's his mind that's in you, it cannot be subpar to who Jesus is. If you put that mind on, then by necessity, as it tells us in 1 Corinthians, that the spirit of the one that is within us ought to show us that we know the thoughts and the intents of the one whose spirit is within us. That it's because Christ is in us and because his mind is in us, we don't have low ways and low thoughts like the unrighteous man. We put up the high ways and the high thoughts of Jesus Christ and we begin to think like the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible exhorts us as the people of God to have the faith of God. Not faith in God, but the faith of God. How do you have the faith of God unless you're thinking like God? The Bible says that we are ambassadors unto the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that we have gone into the earth in Christ's stead as his representative in the earth. Do you really suppose that God is looking for something lesser than Jesus Christ? Or is he looking for somebody that says, I'm going to let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, knowing that I'm sent as an ambassador from another land. I'm just a sojourner. I'm just passing through. But I know who sent me. And because he sent me, I have the authority of heaven and earth. And I'm going to put on the thoughts and the ways and the mind of Jesus. And I'm going to go into the earth and I'm going to wreck somebody's life for the glory of God. Do you hear what I'm saying? It is not good if you sit there in religion and you tell yourself you're terrible and you tell yourself you're just barely getting by. And until it is that we go to the by and by and God takes us and we breathe our last, nothing's going to be great until then. And I'm telling you now, it's not great until then because you believe it ain't great until then. I'm choosing to put on what God says and know that right now heaven's coming to earth right here through this one. I said heaven's coming to earth right now. I'm not waiting for heaven later. I know that heaven is now because I'm putting on the mind of Christ. When that devil comes and he lies in your ear, what are you going to do? You've got a choice to entertain devils or entertain what God has spoken. Entertain angels. You've got a choice to dance with Satan or believe what God has said. You've got a choice when that fiery dart hits you between the eyes to accept it or accept what God says and you better choose real quick or it will cause a wild fire in your head. First Corinthians 2, listen. The Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Amen. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him. Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. Keep listening. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Amen. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teaches but that which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. If I fall out, leave me. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things. Yet he himself is to be judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Listen, we have the mind of Christ. We do not live our lives 
as unrighteous men and women. When you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror and you see wrinkles and you remember how you talked to your kids yesterday and you remember that you didn't read your Bible much and you failed to pray when you would normally pray, you look in that mirror and do not listen to the voice that says, are you really a son of God? What did he say to Jesus in, I think, Matthew 4? What did he say? If you're the son of God, do this. When you're looking in that mirror and he's in your ear and says, if you were really a son of God, you would have never talked to him like that. If you were really a son of God, your prayers would have worked. If you were really a son of God, you would have never thought what you thought. You look in that mirror and you speak back to that lying devil and you say this. I am not formed by the things that I do. I am formed by the things that he has done. I am seated in heavenly places. I'm not given place to your fiery nonsense today. I know I'm bought with a price. I don't have to turn a stone into bread to know who I am. I don't have to entertain you to know what God has done in my life. I am seated in heavenly places. I am bought with a price. I am the offspring of God. Betty, is there any chance that you can jam for me? She's going to jam. Can, right. can you play something crazy dramatic that gets people in their heads and then we can put them where, they want, where we want to? What we're doing on this, she's about to hypnotize y'all with something awesome. <laughs> Not like Biggie Smalls hypnotized, but is that who that was? Help me. Yeah. It was? Man, I'm on it. It's probably because I've been listening to rap music. <laughs> I think I'm kidding. Colossians 3. And have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. The new man's already renewed. Just put him on. Just put him on. Galatians 4. Wherefore, there are no more a servant but a son, and if a son, then an heir of God through Christ. You hear what he's saying? Galatians 3, and if you be Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. And I'm going to tell you right now, my Bible tells me that if I'm an heir, that I have the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all of the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt me if we're thinking in the mind of Christ. The Bible says, how shall two walk together unless they agree? I'm telling you one last time that it is high time as the church that we choose to agree with God and put off the mindsets that God has given unto us by what he has spoken and walked from heaven and not from earth. Yeah, 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 for real. I'm not turning the thing up full blast. <laughs> Jeremiah 4. I wrote some verses down, so I am going to read them. O Jerusalem, wash thine heart from wickedness, that thou mayest be saved. How long shall the vain thoughts lodge within thee? Verse Timothy 4. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that they, thy profiting may appear to all. Psalm 19. Let the words of thy mouth and the meditation of your heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. Amen. Romans 12, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. The renewing of your mind, that you might know what the perfect, acceptable, good will of God is. Amen. 1 Thessalonians 5, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, and everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Proverbs 4, my son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear to my sayings. Let them not depart from your eyes and keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Keep your heart with all diligence. The word for heart there is mind. For out of it flow the issues of life. Put away from thee the froward mouth and perverse lips far from thee. Philippians 2, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ or any comfort of love or any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels of mercies fulfill ye my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Amen. Does anybody hear what I'm saying right now? Amen. 
Go ahead and stand with me. Our text says to rejoice in the Lord always and again rejoice. It's a good place to start. Our text says that the moderation be known unto all men because the Lord is at hand. That's a good place to start. Our text says to be careful for nothing. Careful for nothing. We say, I'm going to be careful, but it would be better to say, I'm going to have faith rather than careful because faith will move a mountain. In everything, on all your prayers and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, Amen. shall keep your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Amen. Those things... But you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. Let me tell you one last time. When the enemy comes with fiery darts, accusing you of things that are simply not truth, think on the things that are honest and just and pure. When the enemy gets in your head and makes you question everything that God has already revealed as truth, Think on things that are lovely and of good report. Do you hear me? I'm just going to leave it at that. Father, we bless you. We love you. We thank you. And God, I'm asking right now that you will plant this seed in the very mind of these people. Cause them to have a boldness in Jesus Christ. To know who they are. To know who bought them. To know who is in them that is greater to know they are seated in you and raised high above principalities, powers, rulers, dominion, and might. To know that they are far above every work of Satan. Knowing that they have weapons of warfare that are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Able to cast down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against that knowledge. Amen. Help them, God, to understand that they are fully equipped with heaven's best. That they have the spirit of the living God that raised Christ Jesus from the grave. Help them to know, God, that they are as you are in this world, that they might walk with you in confidence, knowing who they are. This is not time for religion. Religion's had enough place in the earth. The commandments and doctrines of men have had enough place in the earth. The foolishness of the mind of the carnal man has had enough place in the earth. God, I pray now that you would birth something fresh of the kingdom of God, fresh life from heaven in these people. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.